Yay! Open Google Docs, grab my book. Everyone, welcome to another episode of the ABCs of LGBT+. These are videos where I read portions of my book because I think it's interesting and makes good content. My favorite content, actually. <laughs> Pronouns are... Words used to refer to nouns when not specifically using a noun's proper name. And this time we're going to talk about androsexuality, gynosexuality, ma-sexuality, and womasexuality. And today the term slash identity we're going to unpack is gender confusion. Before we dive into hella cool queer things though, I want to thank one of my favorite apps ever for sponsoring this episode, Best Fiends. Y'all know I'm addicted. I've talked about Best Fiends before because I'm obsessed. For those of you unfamiliar, Best Fiends is a free puzzle adventure game where you collect and upgrade characters by matching same colored objects, and in doing so, you defeat icky, grimy, gross slugs, ones even grosser than those found in the Upside Down. And this month the game is turning into a holiday wonderland and there will be some super cool Christmas-themed fiend-style skins. Ooh. I am currently on level 80, but I'm salty about it because I was, like, over level 200 until I accidentally deleted the app and lost all my progress. So that was a bummer. Uh. And another thing that's rad about the game now is you can connect through Facebook and compete with all your friends using the amazing new leaderboards. And I am a very competitive person, so I dig that. I like to be like, hey, Aunt Barbara, just passed you on level 23. You can download the game for free by clicking the link in the description. And now, back to gay stuff. Today we're going to be talking about just a couple not cis gender identities. Super fun fact, if you didn't know, there are lots of ways to not be cis. Too often the media portrays not IDing solely with your gender assigned at birth in just one way. As being trapped in the wrong body, as being binary trans, as wanting to medically transition in every way possible. That is not always the case, though. There are so many ways to not be cis. And today, two very special not cis guests are going to tell you about how they experience and express their gender. First, there's KB, who's non-binary. For those of you who haven't heard of this identity before, non-binary is both a specific identity and an umbrella term for genders outside the gender binary. A non-binary person could be neither man nor woman, multiple genders simultaneously, flowing between genders, or something entirely different. It's just not exclusively solely the binary. It's not just man or just woman. Now being non-binary can be a totally different experience for different people who identify that way, but this is how KB describes the experience for them. <laughs> When I grew up, there were no words for non-binary identities. You were one thing, boy or girl. And anything in between that was just a personal trait that you had. Like how tomboys were boyish and boys could be girlish. And honestly, for most of my life, I identified with my birth assignment. Non-binary for me is something that I personally had to discover. It wasn't put on a plate for me to eat and it wasn't an answer to a very hard question. Non-binary is more of an extension of who I am. It doesn't define my interactions, my feelings, or what I do on Sundays, it's just a feeling. Like how when I finally got glasses, I discovered that the stars flicker and the moon had shadows. These things that had been there this whole time and I just discovered them. I consider non-binary to be less of an expression of genders and more of an explanation of them. I kept searching for something that made me feel like myself. I was never just one thing. And now that I can identify with something that can regard multiple identities, bi gender, a gender, etc., I now have a word that I can help people understand that I'm not just a box with a check mark inside the one that matches my genitals. I identify with non-binary, but I'm sure I haven't figured out everything about it. And that's okay. After all, I still go by my birth pronouns and I still use my assigned gender. The only difference now is I have a word for who I am. And for me personally, non-binary is a word that helps me 
understand me just a little bit more. That's me. Now Grace, my wife, that's so fun to say, wife, is a bit different. Grace IDs as gray gender. And gray gender is an identity that involves having a weak sense of gender or being somewhat apathetic about one's gender identity and or gender expression, etc. Being meh about gender things. While gray gender people often do feel they have a gender, they may also feel disconnected from their gender, not overly involved in gender as a concept, not particularly invested in their gender, that their gender is very intermittent, maybe it comes and goes, or that their gender is just difficult to define. Now, unlike KB, Grace didn't write a blurb about her gender for my book, but here she is being caught off guard while I ask her about it. Grace, mm -hmm. what does being gray gender mean to you? In a semi-concise way. Um, you can do it. <laughs> uh, to me, I guess it means that I don't have the greatest grasp on my gender, or in that I sometimes don't really just care about it too much. I'm kind of, um, I don't know, ambivalent to it. Uh, my, I guess uh, a big part for me personally is that my you know, um, my parts, <laughs> they just don't play a huge role in my gender. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. Mwah! Thank you, Grace and KB. I invite all these guests, by the way, in an attempt for these genders and these identities to become more real and more humanized for you guys. I want you to understand they're not just definitions that exist somewhere in a book or on Tumblr, but in fact there are real people behind them. There are humans who feel this way and claim these identities. So to wrap things up, there is more than one way to not be cis. And in the end, people should do and claim whatever identity affirms their gender and makes them comfortable. If you liked this content, a lot of it was verbatim from my book. So...